Hello, everybody. This is Alia Jamal, the Love Coach. We are meeting for another Love Circle. It's Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And I am so excited to talk about how to create safety within. Um, this, is, this is that little piece in our psychology where most of us get stuck and we don't even know how to get out of it. So today, through this conversation, I'm going to do my best to help you move um, out of that need to feel safe all the time and how you can move your life a bit forward. So let's first talk about what is safety. We all know that there is physical safety. We all want to leave, uh, live in safe part of the world, safe part of the town, uh, in safe neighborhood. We want to install like, you know, maybe security system in our home to make ourselves feel better safer. So that is just physical safety. And, you know, part of that is um, just, um, I mean, I was going to say common sense, but you just pay attention to where you are and how you need to behave in that time, in that space. Most of us are really good at. It. So then what is the safety that we are going to talk about today? That is psychological safety. And that is coming from the part of our brain, from our lower brain, that starts flagging things as danger, but they are not truly danger. Very rarely, we are in real danger. Very, very rarely. Unless you're going, um, you know, um, down the street, an alley, and somebody's following you, that's real danger. If you just file bankruptcy, that's not real danger. But your, your mind is going to label it as it's real danger. You can die now. Nobody has died after filing bankruptcy. We can very easily build ourselves back up. We are very resilient human. We have so many abilities. So today we are going to talk about how to create that psychological safety within you. So your brain is not just labeling everything danger and you are able to create that safety within you. So you're not looking for it outside. So if I am not feeling safe within me, because my mind is labeling everything as danger. If we had a snowstorm and if my mind label it as danger, I'm not going to go out of the house that day. Or I might want someone else to drive me. That's how I'm going to feel safe. So then our safety goes outward. I am depending on other people. I'm depending on uh, other situations feel safe. So I'm, you know, weather goes bad, I'm going to feel unsafe, you know, economy goes up and down, I'm going to start feeling unsafe. People behavior changes towards me, I'm going to start feeling unsafe. So if, if all those things are going to start impacting us, we do not live our full potential. And our goal is to live our full potential, at least go after our dreams and desires and be able to achieve them. But if we stay stuck in safety, we might be walking the path, but like, you know, shaking and limited and thinking a thousand times before anything we do. So that is, that is what we are going to talk about today. And I am so excited because I know if you take what I am going to share with you today and you implement it, it's going to unlock you in places in your life that you didn't even dream of being unlocked. And if you have any question at any point and you're not uh, here live with us, reach out to me, uh, Google my name, Alia the Love Coach, you'll always find me um, on Facebook or Instagram. So get let's, let's go into, so that was just like, you know, what we are talking about today, what is physical safety, what is psychological safety, and you know, uh, the whole conversation. But it's very important to understand why do you feel unsafe? So look at it this way. There is a program in your mind. If we look at your mind as a, as a computer, and that program is in your unconscious mind, so it can respond faster, so you don't even have to think about it. Just like our heart is beating, we don't have to think about it. There is a program that was created in your childhood to keep you safe. In that time, it was very important for you to have that program so you can stay safe. So you started like, you know, the, the safety from within 
uh, disappeared and safety became the environment that you're in. Because in that time, it was important to, to make that switch. Because you were a little kid, um, you did not have an independent life, you needed others' help to survive. So it was very important. But if we don't understand that I, I only needed that program when I was a child, and now I am a grown up, I am independent, I can go wherever I want, I can take actions any way I want, but still that program is running me. It's running my life. It's like I'm trying to become a butterfly, but my cocoon won't break. I am ready. I'm completely transformed. But the cocoon is not breaking. If it's not breaking, you're a very suffocating butterfly who's neither a caterpillar nor a flying butterfly outside. So that's why we start to feel so frustrated with ourselves. When we have this need to feel safe all the time and we want things to just stay the same, we don't want them to change, it starts to feel so frustrating because there is a force within us. It's trying to break through us. It's trying very hard and it is eventually going to. That's why you are watching this right now because that is the voice that has also brought you to watch this conversation and learn something from it. And that is the power of our soul. The soul that came in this body, it is here to do something. It's going to just, you know, pound at those walls. It's going to break through them. Our job is to learn how by getting support, by working with a mentor, by reading books, by taking program. The more we understand, the easier we are able to break through it. So that, that wall of safety, that invisible wall of safety that was created in childhood still exists within you. That's why it feels um, so frustrating that, you know, why I'm behaving like this. Now, before you even start thinking like, what are you talking about? I'm going to share some examples with you so it makes sense. So let's say, uh, and I am going to go for a little bit of extreme example. If anyone get triggers, again, please reach out to me. I work with a lot of stuff with my, uh, you know, clients. We do release uh, deep um, emotional wounds that were created in childhood. So I am going to share some of the common ones, and they are going to be a bit triggering. For example, if it's a five-year-old girl, right, and somebody she knew was physically abusing her. It could be sexual or it could be just like, you know, beating up. So what that child did, that child, uh, you know, maybe ran away. Uh, if it was like, you know, you're making too much noise, they're going to go quiet. If it was like, you know, because they were looking very beautiful, they are going to start like, you know, dress down, maybe going to start uh, dressing like a boy. If they have made the association in their mind, that, you know, maybe like, you know, the way my body is, they're going to start stuffing things in their mouth. They're going to gain weight. So there's so many different behaviors can uh, stem out of that little incident. It could have been like even once it could have happened. So now that wonderful, brilliant, intelligent woman, maybe in her 20s or 30s, have a very successful career. But she's also always going to uh, hold herself back. Like, you know, she doesn't want to be the center of attention. Let's say if she's in the office right now and, you know, uh, the next position she can upgrade it to could be like, you know, a senior level executive. She's going to hold herself back. She's going to be like, you know, let me just hide in the back of the meeting room so nobody even knows I come here. I do a wonderful job. I don't want to be seen. Now that, that thing, I don't want to be seen, it feels safe. The way mind has created it, if I, if I stay safe, if I stay invisible, I stay safe. So that is how it's going to hold her back. Now, um, going to like, you know, we're overeating starts in our childhood out of that kind of incident. And, you know, there's so many reasons overeating could become our safe mechanism, but this is just one of the example. Then even in our adult life, again, we don't want to be the center of attention that we can ever get 
uh, attacked by somebody we thought who would love us. So we stay in, a, in that very familiar behavior. We still struggle with our relationship with food. We, we lose weight, we gain weight, we lose weight, we gain weight. So that is the safe behavior. It's keeping us safe. It's keeping us from being in the spotlight. It's very rare, like, you know, somebody, unfortunately, that is the that is the reality of the culture most of us live in, in most parts of the world. Usually the person who's like, you know, their body is not in the in the most model like shape idea does not get uh, become the center of attention or center of attention from an opposite gender or similar gender, like, you know, however their sexual orientation is. So we stay hidden. And now the, the behavior starts to become so frustrating because the person is like, you know, I've been trying to lose weight for 10 years or my whole life and it hasn't happened. The struggle is not going to go away unless that program within has changed. That I am going to be safe and, you know, my safety does not have to depend on like, you know, if there is a spotlight on me or there's not spotlight on me. So that is that is the switch we are going to make happen today. A few other examples of safe behavior. Um, when, we, when we feel like I need somebody to go with me to do something, like I need company all the time. I cannot be alone. Again, when the child was really very little, maybe they got really scared. Maybe they had a nightmare. Maybe they watched a a uh, horror movie or something happened where they got terrified. They just quickly ran to their parents' room, slept the night there. But ever since, they don't want to be alone. So if as an adult, we don't want to be alone, we are always going to find people to cling on to, which creates some very unhealthy relationships. When in any relationships, as an adult, when we are clingy, it creates very unhealthy environment within that relationship because the other pe person eventually is like you know I am suffocating but the person who's dependent they're like and I need you I need you a little bit more so that's where um, some women would say you know I kind of come out needy so that needy behavior becomes the safety that's going to keep you in that um, environment that's going to keep you uh, locked into that behavior. Few other examples that I want to talk to before we go any further is, um, you know, uh, many times it could be a spouse or it could be extended family member that every time we, you know, they step into our life, we label them as danger. So one of the very common example I'm going to use, it could be um, you know, a person of authority, for example, it could be a mother-in-law, it could be a father-in-law, it could be your own parents that you feel afraid of them. And then you're like, why do I feel afraid of them? Like, you know, they love me, they care for me. Why do I get so edgy when they are around? Again, maybe as a childhood, somebody blamed something. Like, you know, they cooked up a story. They were maybe a person of authority and they overpowered you against your will. And from that point, uh, that behavior has been stuck there. It, it labeled it as danger. So what ended up happening in this situation? We start avoiding people. So we start avoiding that creates a lot of estranged, estranged relationships. We are afraid to even get closer to people. You're so afraid to get closer because staying apart, staying away feels safe because then they cannot reject you, then they cannot attack you, or they cannot do anything to you. So it could create a kind of lifestyle where we just want to be alone by ourselves. But again, that starts uh, creating um, frustration over time, because there's something within you that is saying, hey, I want, to be, I want to be out and about, and I want to speak my truth. But then you're like, but I don't know how to do that. I'm afraid of all these people. But there was something that happened in childhood that made you afraid of one person. That safety mechanism is with you even when you are in your adult life and professionally maybe very successful person as well. But the behavior is 
impacting your life. It's impacting your relationships. It's impacting your emotions. So it's important to understand that we do, when we do have this need to feel safe all the time, and we surround ourselves with familiar things, and we have a hard time with the change, that started something um, that stems from something unstable in our childhood. Now, we are not going to go back in your childhood and completely change that because childhood is gone. It only exists as a memory in our mind. So as an adult, we do have a choice. We can do things right now because right now is the only moment that exists. We don't even know if like, you know, five minutes from now exists too. We'll know when we get there. So we are going to do things right now in this moment to feel safe. So I don't have to depend on like, you know, oh, whether my husband is going to drive me or is my friend coming over, you know, to celebrate something with me because I don't feel uh, comfortable celebrating all by myself. Or do I need somebody to go on a vacation with me? Or do I need somebody to go and watch a movie with me? Or do I want to just hide uh, behind my brilliance and never step forward and become, you know, my full potential, the light that I am? So all those scenarios, we are going to focus on changing them, but they all stem from something that happened in our childhood. But we can change them right here in this, in this moment. So the next thing I, uh, I slightly talked about already the negative impact um, it creates when there is the need to feel safe is so big. It creates um, frustration when it comes to career advancement. It can create a lot of drama in relationships. When we say, oh, you know, these are codependent relationships, usually they are between two people who needed to feel safe. So they felt safe with each other. So they are so clingy. They both are dependent on each other. It's not a healthy relationship. None of them can be a person of their own. So this is what it's going to happen. When one person wants to make a decision, let's say, you know, the person is an accountant and they're like, you know, I'm just done with accounting. I want to do something else. Maybe I want to become a painter now. And they are maybe 35, 40. The only thing they're worried about what my spouse is going to think, what my husband is going to think, what my wife is going to think, oh my God, is it going to create a strain in our relationship? That is a relationship where there's no freedom. A healthy relationship is a free relationship. That's where two people can make their own decisions as long as they keep on, uh, like, you know, they can fulfill their responsibilities and they can just come and share with the other person, hey, this is what I want to do. You don't need the validation from the other person. So that is where a person is not able to advance and do what they really, really want to do. They, they kind of get stuck. So many people, they are like, you know, retired and they never changed their career. They really, really wanted to because they, they thought like, you know, their sp spouse might not approve. Or they even had a conversation and their spouse was like, no, just do whatever you're doing. It's stable. Because safety and stability is more important. So when safety and stability is more important, we are not going to go towards more success. And life is for more. We all are born with this force within us that wants more. Tomorrow it wants more. Now that does not equal to greed. This is a life's desire, life expression that is within us. For example, within me right now, the being that is within me, the force that's within me, it wants me to write all these books. That's more. It wants me to reach out to more people. That's more. Is that going to increase my income? Yes, that's going to be more. Would that help me uh, help so many other people? Yeah, that is for more. Now that force is tugging at me to expand. If I get stuck with the need to feel safe and you know I'm living in living in my little square and I'm like oh that is too much change I don't want that much change I don't want to write the book it's okay like you know I have a little bit of clients that's fine if I get stuck in that it becomes so much 
frustrating over time. So what do I need to work on? I need to work on creating safety within me where I don't need to feel safe based on the work I'm doing, based on the surrounding I am in, based on the um, like, you know, different gathering I'm going to. I go to um, two to three networking events in person. I try my best to make them in person where I, most of the time I walk into a room full of strangers. I have, I don't know anybody at all. And I'll just walk up to somebody and I'll start talking and we'll become friends. And then I'll talk to somebody else and I'll talk to somebody else that I can do that if there's no need to feel safe outside of me and I can create it within me. That's when we just fly. So if you're sitting with that desire that I want to do so much more in my life, this need to feel safe is keeping you in a box. It's literally keeping you in a box. And over time, it's only going to turn into frustration, anxiety, and sometimes even depression. That unlived potential within us is the worst feeling we can ever have. And I'm not sure if you have ever talked to somebody who's um, retired or they are already in an assisted living home and they're just talking about, you know, I wanted to do all these things, but I never got around to do them because they were just, you know, they had so many responsibility. That is the voice of unlived potential. And I want all of us to live that potential because that's how we change and impact this world. That's how we are all going to add to what we came here to add. Each and every one of us is very unique and we all want to contribute that. So let's make that happen. So now, very easy, how to create safety within you. We are going to create it at two levels. We are going to create physical uh, safety and we are going to create psychological safety. Now, let me explain how that is. So when there is a trigger in our environment, our body uh, has its own mechanism, which is very physical. The chemicals get released and, you know, there's blood rushing to certain parts of the body and the whole mechanism is going on. That mechanism supports us to stay alive in times of danger. It's very, very important. So when there is a psychological trigger and, you know, let's say somebody, you pass by somebody and the person just looked at you and kind of laughed, whereas if they are making fun of you or you thought they both are talking about you, that is a psychological trigger. So when the psychological trigger happens, the, the whole physiology changes too. It's not just your thoughts are changing. The whole, um, you know, body mechanism gets tripped as well. The alarm is going on. We want to control the alarm in your physical body. And then we want to learn how to think certain way that you can take any trigger, you can transform it, and you can feel safe right there and then without, without ending in a dark hole, without limiting yourself um, from being who you really want to be. So it's going to get just a little bit technical because I want to make sure, that's why I have my board ready here. I want to make sure that you understand what is happening inside of your body. What is happening inside of your body? If you can understand, my friend, that, you can control yourself with so much ease. For example, uh, not sure if you have heard that story. One time I had my first panic attack while driving a car around like 50, 55 to 60 miles per hour on a New York City highway at nighttime while my son was in the car sleeping uh, with me. So it was just me and him and I am going on, on the speed and something triggered me in my thoughts and my body just went into full-blown panic attack. That was the first time I experienced something uh, like that, but because I've been working with my clients, I knew exactly what to do. I did not even try to control my thoughts. I just went for my physiology. I was like, I want to change my physiology right now, and that is going to help change my thoughts so much faster. So 
uh, let me help you understand how we can change our physiology. Whenever you feel triggered and whenever you have this feel of uh, feeling unsafe or feeling like, oh my God, I'm feeling anxious. Uh, what would happen? You're going into worry, anxiety, doubt, confusion. Those are the ways subconscious mind is going to pull you down. But the reason it's pulling you down because because it's telling you, hey, it's not safe. We just detected something unsafe in the environment. We need to not be the the big person or in the in the spotlight. So you know, if your whole body starts to have a response, you might have a faster heartbeat. You might have you know uh, your breathing in and out. You're panting, and then your whole body maybe start to shiver like this, and then. Maybe even the room starts to spin for you. We all experience that in our own unique way. So that is your body saying danger, danger, danger. So this is what's going on. We have, uh, when it comes to, you know, this kind of system, um, there are two kind of nervous system. One is called sympathetic nervous system. One is called parasympathetic nervous system. Now, parasympathetic nervous system is a web of neurons. Uh, and then the sympathetic nervous system is a web of neurons too. Neurons are, um, you know, the, the cell of our nervous system. That's how it's made up of. Parasympathetic nervous system is a calm one. It's like, you know, I'm just chillaxing. I'm just sitting here doing nothing. Life is beautiful. Maybe when you're sitting on the beach and even uh, even better, if you're sitting on the beach all by yourself, you don't have to worry about kids, family, friends. You're just like, it's just me, the water, and the beautiful environment I am in. Most likely, you're in parasympathetic nervous system. That is where the repair happened. That is where you think of all the dreams and the possibilities and all that. Now, sympathetic nervous system is the danger mode. This is like, there's some danger around us. We got to run now. Unfortunately, most of us, we live in sympathetic nervous system because of our lifestyle, because we never give ourselves a break to even sit down and to process and just to breathe and just be in the moment. We are on the run. We're on the run. Unfortunately, we call that like, you know, I'm a very productive person. We take pride in that. Uh, we say like, you know, I'm an overachiever. I'm a high achiever. We put all those labels to it. but we don't realize it's taking a toll on your body because our body needs to stay balanced. You're taking so much energy from your body to stay in the sympathetic way of being. Sympathetic nervous system, uh, you know, mode. Because when you are in danger, body doesn't care if your kidney needs repair today. It doesn't care if you're you know, skin needs repair today. It's like, that is more important. So your body starts to deteriorate faster, earlier than a person who's just relaxed. That's why we have these places in the world called blue zones. People live longer there. If you go and if you have ever been in one of them, I have not. If you have been in uh, any one of them, I've only studied about them. Um, you would realize people over here, over there, have a very relaxed way of living, very relaxed way of living. So they are living in parasympathetic nervous system most of the time. So when you are having this need to feel safe, even if you're just sitting in front of the TV and you're eating popcorn, you're watching a wonderful movie, and then your partner starts talking about something that's like a change that is coming. And you're like, oh my God, why, why everything is changing? You start to feel like, you know, you're not safe anymore. And you're, you're like, how do I become safe now? How do I become safe? Let me go get like, you know, um, some more Oreo. Let me eat that. Let me eat this. You're trying to change your feeling, that uneasy feeling that you're feeling so you can feel safe. So you can come back to that familiar way of be being. What's happening? Your body is going into the sympathetic nervous system and you're like, why it feels so weird? I, I want to calm it down. So in that moment, we want to change your 
nervous system to sympathetic nervous system. And there's some very, very easy physical things you can do to make it happen. So um, one of the things you can do is move your uh, awareness from here to any other part of the body, as long as it's underneath the shoulder. So you can come to your heart or you can come to your lower back. If you can get to your lower back, that is perfect. So while I was driving the car during uh, like, you know, my anxiety that was going on, I took my hand, I, one of my hand and I put it on my lower back, like we're um, kind of like close to the tailbone. So if you put your hand over there, and even if you apply a little bit of pressure, your focus goes on like, what's, what's going on there? So your awareness moved from here to there. If your awareness has moved from here to any lower part of your body, everything in your nervous system is shifting already. Because the focus is not here. The chaos lives here where you're overthinking, you're trying to process. Then it's like, oh, what's going on there? You create a distraction in your body. And that distraction takes you from sympathetic to parasympathetic nervous system. Very easy. So that is something you can do when you feel uneasy or when you're like, I'm not feeling safe right now. You can put your hand on your lower back. You can also raise your hands like this. So if you're raising your hands like this, you're in the winner's pose. So we all know as human, when somebody is going like this, we just won. So body feels in that moment, you just won something. Nobody's having an anxiety or panic attack or feeling unsafe when they just want something. So we are trying to send different messages to your body so it would switch to the other system. That's all we are trying to do. You can put your hand on the middle of your chest. It activates your um, heart's, uh, heart chakra, front heart chakra energy. Also opens up your back heart energy as well, which is going to send a signal it's going to trip over the, the lower brain that we have, and it's going to send a signal to this part of the brain, prefrontal cortex, and you're going to go into the possibility instead of like, what's going on? What's, what's wrong right now? Like, you know, the danger, danger. It's going to switch to like, what's possible here? All these things you can do to shift the direction where you're, body's taking you right now just the physical body we didn't even talk about the psychological aspect of it another very quick way to switch yourself from sympathetic to parasympathetic nervous system is touch your skin like this like very loving kind gentle touch you can even keep a feather around you if you're a person who have that need to feel safe all the time you can take a feather and you can use the feather gently to run on your skin so your skin is telling the brain right now, hey, I'm, I'm being loved right now. So you don't, you are not being, uh, nobody is being loved while they are running on a battlefield, right? So our, our body makes that association, oh, that means everything should be calm now. So it switches right away to like, you know, that calm and relaxed way of being. So if you, um, struggle with this all the time. You're like, Alia, I need to feel safe all the time. I am always feeling uneasy. Whenever there is a change going on, I, I just feel like, you know, I need to just stay home, do nothing. And I don't know how to even process it. Use all these four things on your body as much as you can. For example, if you're just standing in the kitchen doing something with one hand, put the other hand in, on your lower back. If you're just watching TV, just, you know, run your fingers on your hand like that. Love yourself. Even kiss yourself. Tell yourself, I love you. You can do all those things. You can bring that as a lifestyle change in everyday living. Or maybe like, you know, even doing this before you start driving or before you get to work or right after you get home, whatever time you feel like that uneasiness is more you're going to start to see a change in how you feel just by doing that. If you don't even take anything else. So I highly, highly recommend you 
implement these things uh, in your day-to-day -day life. Now, the, la the second thing that we are gonna go into, that is psychological. So remember when we were talking about you were a little kid, something happened and a different program got into your head, right? Now that program is running your life. That program is the unconscious behavior that you slip into whenever there's a trigger in your environment. So um, I, I wanna draw something for you. When we are looking for safety, we are in turn, uh, internally, we want to be in control. Or when we are trying to be in control, we are going for safety. So I want you to understand something. There's no such thing as safety. Yes, we just spend, you know, more than a half an hour talk about how to create that safety within you. But nobody, none of us is safe. And if anything, we have learned in the past two years, globally, we have learned that anyone can die at any point. Anything can happen to any of us at any point of day or night. But still, our nervous system wants to hold on to something that it can say, it's mine. It's always going to be there. It's part of our, um, part of our, um, you know, how we are created, how our bodies, how we work. It's part of that. It can be a blessing and it can also be a curse at the same time if we don't know how to work with it. So today we're going to learn how to work with it. So once you understand there's no safety, then, you know, how, how, what do we tell that part of us? That is, um, realizing that we are divine being in a human body. Now, if you don't believe in life after death, or if you don't believe in, you know, we are soul, you can believe in that there's life living through you. There's, there's something that's moving you and one day it's going to be gone. But if, if, um, you know, you do believe in afterlife, you do believe in a soul journey, then you can understand that the experience me and you are having in this lifetime, which could be, you know, 100 years, I'm on a 100 year plan, is just a dot in your whole soul journey. It's just a dot. So, what is more permanent and safe? The soul. The, the more you realize this, now, this is something I've been working with for a while now, for a few years now. And every day I sit down with myself and I just try to comprehend the concept that there is a soul that's living through me. And the day it comes out of the body, whenever it decides to, there's not going to be Alia anymore, but that soul is going to live. It's such a profound um, concept. It's, it is taught in most religion, but we don't ponder over it. We don't make it our own. It's usually like, you know, superficial idea. Oh yeah, that's, that's what I learned in Sunday school. That's what I learned, you know, in that grade. But I am inviting you to really sit with it at least a couple of minutes every day and realize there is something moving through you that keeps you alive. That thing is permanent, but you're not. So your safety is being connected with that soul. As long as my soul is in this body, I, I am in touch with her. I mean, soul does not have any gender. That's what we know from, um, you know, spiritual teachers. It just chooses to come in different bodies. So that is, that is the part of you that is permanent. And a book that is really going to help you so much in just this little concept is Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. Um, definitely give it a read and read it at least like five, six times. Don't just read it once and you'll be like, oh, okay, I got it. We need to work on living from a different place. We live from fear. We live from worry. We live from like, you know, this lower brain right here. We are, we are living from like, you know, I need to be safe. Yes, something happened in our childhood. We started living from that place. But we do have a choice to shift it. So we have to do the work to shift it. I'm doing the work every single day to shift it. Every single day I sit with myself and sometimes I'm just like, I just want to feel this power within me. 
So I become aware of my whole body, start connecting with that power. That is what's permanent. That is safe. Nobody can even kill it. Nobody can uh, cheat it. Nobody can betray it. Nobody can lie to that part of you because it knows beyond what our body knows. It has senses that our body does not have. Our, uh, in the self-development, our goal is to expand our consciousness so much that we connect with that higher part of us, which takes lifetime. And it takes every single day work. That's why I'm so obsessed with self-development and the whole field of self-development, because that is what I get to taste. I get to taste how it feels to be, to live as a soul and not just as a body. So in that moment, when you're feeling uneasy, just take a very deep breath and ask yourself, do you know there's a part of me? It doesn't even care about what's going on because it's permanent. It's just that like this moment is literally dot of a dot in, in the whole, uh, you know, experience of that being. So what you're doing, you're learning to think in a different way. Over time, what's going to happen when every time you feel uneasy and you think in a different way, that program start to get rewired to a new program. So for example, I would, I would tell you this, somebody tried to like, you know, tag my business page yesterday, somebody who was like, you know, not being very, you know, kind towards my Facebook post and whatnot. And I ended up, you know, unfriending them and they tagged my Facebook, my business page. And I don't know what they wrote. Facebook just showed me the tag and you know, like, you know, that they are mentioning. And I just removed the notification. Now, Alia from like, let's say, when I just became a coach in 2017, it would have ruined her week, if not month. Because it would be like, how someone can do that? Why they are doing it? Oh my God, what's going to happen? Blah, blah, blah. It's going to drive crazy. But the person I am today, I was like, can that person ever hurt me? No, I'm a permanent being. I'm going to keep living even after I'm out of this body. And that person is also a being who's going to live outside of this body. They are choosing to spend their time, like, you know, tagging different people. That's their choice. Do I want to invest my very precious time, very, very precious time that I'm never going to get back in this, in this body, in this life experience that I am in right now? He was like, no, I don't want to do that. All I had to do is like, you know, delete the notification, <laughs> write a post about it in case like, you know, some other people are thinking about it uh, to do something like that and move on. And that's it. It did not impact me at all because again, the way I am thinking now versus, you know, back in the day is from a very different place. Is from a much higher place. Yes, I am still growing in other parts, but at least in this one, I have grown to a point where I can see somebody being, you know, whoever they want to be and just move on, not get stuck with it, not try to be like, you know, I am right, you're wrong, why you're doing this. Those are all need to be safe. Those are all the ways we try to stay in control. I don't need to be in control anymore. At least in this scenario, there are other parts of my life still I practice control and I am learning. I'm growing through those. So I'm just showing you when we learn how to think a little different and it comes from a very solid foundational concept in your life, it can change anything in your life. Like, you know, the, the program that you have in your mind, it can change it very quickly. So that is first thing I'm going to suggest to you when you are feeling uneasy, just take a pause and focus on it. That I am actually a divine being living in a human body and I am untouchable. No human can do anything to me, nothing. This moment is not bigger than me. 
I am way bigger than this moment. When you start to think like that, when you start to have those pep talks with you, you're going to rewire the way your system processes when there is a trigger. Now, the second thing that I'm going to share with you guys, so there's going to be two ways you control your mind in that moment. And physically, we have already talked about it. Your true safety, your true security is your ability to choose. So in that moment, you can ask yourself, what am I going to choose right now? Am I going to choose to panic? Or am I going to choose to just be joyful? Well, we don't realize we actually have a choice. When you are under the spotlight, let's say you're a for, a, for a promotion in your career, when you're in that spotlight, are you going to choose to move forward or are you going to choose to move backward? You do have that choice. Now that choice becomes your safety and your security. It's not what other people are doing, what they are saying. For example, somebody like, you know, said something unpolite to you. You have a choice to feel bad and never talk to them again. Or you have a choice to politely tell them, hey, that was, that was a little mean what you just said. But stay in your own composure. Here you feel that you got control right now in this moment. That one, my friend, is going to require a little bit of practice. It's going to require practice because your, uh, your natural response would be like, you know, to do something to the person who's, you know, not being kind to you in that moment. If, you know, that has been your behavior or you might just, you know, run away and disappear and never talk to them again if that has been your behavior. But in that moment, you can choose to talk to them in a polite way, but staying in your power all at the same time. We all have those choices available. The more you focus on what am I choosing right now, that is where you get to practice control. That's where you get to practice feeling safe and secure instead of what's happening around you or outside of you. So that brings us to the end. It was a long one that when we have this, uh, I'm just going to end it with this one. When you have this need to feel safe, and you're looking for things outside of you to feel safe, that safety is never going to happen. So you can either learn now to feel safe inside of you, or you can keep living in a miserable way, because that is a very miserable living for at least a human. That is a very miserable way of living, because you're never going to be happy. It would always be something or somebody who will like, you know, tick you off or trip you off and you will go right into the panic mode and you'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, what's happening? That is not how we want to live as a human. We have the ability to achieve the levels of peace and comfort and ease that, that are beyond imagination. So why not practice that? Why not practice the God-given abilities that we have? We just need to polish them and use them because we were not taught these techniques. We were not taught these skills that, hey, in that moment, I can actually think on demand instead of, you know, letting other people think for me or let other people behavior get to me or behave as my mom behaved or behave as my dad behaved. We were not taught those um, skills. So this is the time where we get to learn it on our own and we get to be a person of our own. So we get to live the potential that's within us. Because that is the potential that's going to help so many women. I mean, so many humans. If we don't let it come out, we are not going to contribute what we came here to contribute. We all came here to help each other out. If I'm not going to let my light out, I'm not going to be able to help so many people that I'm here to help. Same is true for you. So if this resonates with you, if you want to go deeper into a conversation, please reach out to me. Let's have a conversation about it. And we all want to be in a place where we control our safety and our environment does not control our safety. So that is all for today. I'll see you all wonderful people next Thursday. If you have any question and you're just watching this random video on YouTube, please just Google Alia the Love Coach. You'll find me. I'm here to help you 
um, go through this journey. Um, that is my work. That is my passion. And I'm looking forward to work with you. Sending you all lots of love. Bye.